Good morning and welcome to the session on quantum cryptography. We will have three papers in this session. The first paper is on Merkle puzzles in a quantum world. The co-authors are Gilles Brassard, Peter Hoyer, Kasim Kalash, Mark Kaplan, Sophie Laplante, and Louis Selvale. And Kasim will give the talk. Good morning, everyone. Merkle puzzles in a quantum world. This is a joint work with Gilles Brassard. Peter Hoyer, Marc Aplon, Sophie Laplant, and Luis Alvarez. Consider the key distribution problem in which we have two distinct parties, Alice and Bob, having no secret information in common, are in need to share a secret S over a communication channel. The channel is authenticated, but no protection against eavesdropping. In fact, we assume that an eavesdropper has full knowledge of any communication between Alice and Bob and is eager to learn the secret S. The challenge is to make the eavesdropping effort grow as much as possible in the legitimate effort. Efforts are measured in terms of query complexity because all parties have private access to a random oracle. The first solution to this problem was proposed by Ralph Melke in 1974 as a project proposal in a course on computer security at UC Berkeley. The idea was rejected by the professor, but Merkel continued working on it and submitted the paper to communications of the ACM. Initially, the paper was rejected because it was beyond the cryptography thinking at that time. However, it was eventually published in 1978. For more details, visit Merkel's website. Merkel's scheme is based on the Bersley paradox, and it's provably secure in the random oracle model, in contrast with the schemes based on the assumed difficulty of some mathematical problem. In this model, a protocol is considered to be secure if the cryptanalytic effort grows superlinearly with a legitimate effort. And now, we present Merkle scheme. In Merkle scheme, Alice and Bob have access to a black box function f of domain size n square. In the first step, Alice selects at n random points in the domain of f, evaluates f on them, and transmits their images to Bob. Let big X be the set of randomly selected points and Y be the set of corresponding images. In the second step, Bob finds one element of X, or if you like, Bob inverts an arbitrary image. To do so, he follows the following optimal strategy. He selects a random point S in the domain of F, evaluates F of S, and verifies if F of X belongs to the set Y. He repeats this process again and again until he, f he, f he gets yes, meaning that until he succeeds to invert some image f of xi. And the secret will be xi. The question is now, what's the complexity of Bob's effort to accomplish this, this step? Since the domain of f is n square and the number of possible images is n, this can be done in the order of n queries based on the birthday paradox. Having got S, Bob sends F of S to Alice. Now Alice, given F of S, use the table to find the matching image in the second column of the table, and this can find XI. At this level, Alice and Bob can share a secret S in the order of n queries. And the question is now, what's the eavesdropping effort? This is a view with the adversary. Access to a black box of domain size n square and full knowledge of the conversation between Alice and Bob. While Bob has the freedom to invert any of the n images, the adversary is faced to invert f of s. Since f is given as a black box, the remaining list is used for the adversary, 
And the only way to invert f of s is to try random points in the domain of f one by one. So on the average, the adversary has to try half the points in the domain. Therefore, the adversary needs omega n square queries to find s. The natural question is, can we do better than this quadratic security? No, due to Barak and Mahmoudi, they proved that every key exchange protocol in the random oracle model can be broken in the order of n square queries. Therefore, Merkel scheme is optimal since we have this upper bound and a matching lower bound and the problem is settled. Sorry. But what about the quantum mode? First of all, being in a quantum mode, we assume that the adversary is always quantum. However, Alice and Bob, the legitimate parties, are allowed to be quantum. I mean, they are allowed to use a quantum computer. However, the channel is always classical and always authenticated. It's important to keep in mind that we don't transmit quantum information. We need to introduce two fundamental quantum search tools, a Grover's algorithm and its generalization, BBHT, for Boyer, Brassard, Hoyer, and Tab. In fact, they are essential to understand most of this talk. Consider the following search problem. Given a black box function of domain size n and t distinct images of this function, the problem is to invert one of them. BBSG solved this problem after about square root of n divided by t. However, if we are faced to invert a specific image, meaning that t equal 1, a Grover's algorithm finds the solution after about square root of n. And this is optimal. Now, back to the security of Merkle scheme, however, in a quantum world, because we saw that Merkle scheme provides quadratic security against a classical adversary. But now, the domain of f is n square, and the adversary is faced to invert f of s. A quantum adversary can find s after about the square root of n square, which equal n. Thus, Merkle scheme is completely broken. So, because the eavesdropping effort equals to the secret chaining process up to constant factor. And now, we arrive to our two motivating questions. The first one is, can the quadratic security of Merkle scheme, possible in the classical world, be restored in a quantum world if the legitimate users make use of quantum powers? The second question, which is more challenging, can every key exchange protocol in the random oracle model be broken in the order of any quantum queries when legitimate parties are restricted to classical world? In fact, we made two main contributions. We answered the second question and made progress on the first one. And the first progress on the first one is due to Brassard and Salvai, who introduced quantum Merkle puzzles. In the quantum Merkle puzzles, they allow Alice and Bob to use quantum computers, precisely Bob. And they increased the domain of the black box from n square to n cube. And the remaining of the protocol is very similar to Merkle scheme. In the first step, Alice selects random points and transmits their images to Bob. Bob finds one element of x, or if you like, inverts an arbitrary image. But now, of course, the secret will be s. But now a classical Bob cannot do that job because the domain is an cube. However, using BBHT, this can be done about, after about square root of n cube divided by n, where n cube is the size of the domain and n is the number of possible images. So this can be done in the order of n quantum queries. The remaining steps are exactly the same. Bob will send f of s. Alice, given f of s, can use the table and find f of xi, thus xi. At the end of the protocol, Alice makes exactly t queries to the oracle f. Bob makes 
and the order of any quantum queries, and they have a shared key, S. And now, what's the security of quantum Merkle puzzles? It's very similar to the uh, similar, uh, previous analysis. Adversary is phased to invert f of s, but now the domain is any cube. Even a quantum adversary, uh, he can find s in the order of square root of any cube, which equal order of n three half, and this is optimal. And the left and opening question is if we can do better. And this is our first contribution. We answered positively, yes, we devised a quantum protocol and proved its security of theta of n 5 third. In our protocol, we introduced another black box function t of domain size n cube. And the first step remained the same. However, in the second step, Bob finds two elements of x instead of one, as before. And to find each of them, we use BBHT. And in this case, the secret will be S as a prime instead of S as before. Now, Bob, having got S as a prime, sends T of S B twice X exclusive or T of S a prime. On Alice's side, Alice queries the oracle T on the set X. And now, given W, she can use the table and bitwise XOR to find the secret S as a prime. And finally, Alice and Bob share a secret S as a prime. It's clear that Alice makes exactly T queries to the oracle F and exactly T queries to the oracle T and classical queries, and Bob makes in the order of any quantum queries. If we also care about time, it seems at first that Alice will, will need to try about n square pairs to find S as prime. Unfortunately, fortunately, we can do that in linear time. Now, for the security of our first contribution, it's divided in two parts. First, we devised a quantum attack which can be accomplished on the order of n 5 third and proved a matching lower bound of omega of n 5 third. I give a brief idea about these two steps. The quantum attack is based on quantum mocks on Johnson graph and its adaptation of Mbinus' algorithm for the element distinction problem, which is optimal due to Aronson and Chi. The element distinction problem is to decide if a function C, given as a black box, is one to one. For a domain of size n, this problem can be solved in theta of n two third. And the question is, why do we have order of n times n two third in our case? Because in our case, the domain of C is x, and the size of x is n. And x is embedded into n three n cube elements, and to query C requires theta of n queries using BBHT. For the lower bound proof, sorry, it's a three-step process. We defined a search problem related to element distinctness, and we proved omega of n five thirds as a lower bound for this search problem. And finally, we reduce this search problem to the eavesdropping strategy against our protocol. The main observation is that the defined search problem is the composition of a variant of element distinctness on n elements with searching each element in a set of size n square. One would like to apply the composition theorem for quantum query complexity due to Hoyer, Lee, and Spalik and Lee, Mittal, Reichardt, and Spalik. Unfortunately, this theorem is not applicable in our case because it requires the inner function to be Boolean. Therefore, we proved a new composition theorem using similar techniques. In particular, the quantum eavesdropping strategy is in omega n to third times n, where omega n to third is the complexity of element distinctness on n elements, and n is the complexity of search 
in a set of size n square. Our second contribution answered the following questions. Can every key exchange protocol in the random oracle model be broken in the order of n quantum queries when legitimate parties are restricted to classical world? The answer is no, because we devised a classical protocol and proved its security of theta of n7 over 6. In fact, it's very similar to the first one. Now, Bob is back to the classical world. And the domain of black box functions is reduced from n cubed to n squared. The first step is the same. Bob finds two elements of x. The secret is s as a prime. But now, we can't use BBHT. But since the domain, since the domain is n squared, Bob, as before, used random points in the domain of f, and this can be done in the order of n. And Bob sent t of s xor t of s prime. This, this is the same as the uh, previous protocol. A quantum adversary finds the secret in theta n of n 7 over 6. And this, this, uh, this proof is the same as uh, the first protocol using the same attack and lower bound technique. In summary, while Merkle scheme provides quadratic security in the classical world, it's completely broken in the quantum world. However, we devised a classical protocol providing security theta of n7 over 6. When Alice and Bob are allowed to use the quantum computers, we made improvement over the scheme of Brassai and Salvai from theta of 3 half to theta of n 5 thirds. In fact, the protocols we present in this talk are different from the two protocols in the proceedings. The classical protocol improves over theta of n 13 over 12, which is the first classical protocol secure against a quantum adversary. However, the quantum protocol is similar but provides the same security. In addition, we proved a new competition theorem for quantum query complexity. The first open question is, are our two protocols optimal? We can just that they are not, because we discovered a sequence of quantum protocols in which our most efficient quantum attack tends to theta of n square, and a sequence of classical protocol in which our most efficient attack tends to theta of and three half. And our current question, open question is, are these attacks optimal? Other open question is, is there a quantum protocol that exactly achieves quadratic security? Is there a quantum protocol that achieves better than quadratic security? What's the optimal classical protocol? Thanks for your attention. Questions? So let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.